I mean, the crazy part about it is the group we were all we were all suspicious of it. We all we all was questioning things during the first day of orientation and everybody was saying the same thing, like, nah, I'm not I'm not feeling this and we was asking about like the fuel, like we gotta pay for the fuel, but y'all are getting a discount, why is that? And stuff like that. So All right, so let's get into it. Holly in the building. So everybody, you know, want want to give trucking tr trucking companies a chance. You know, I mean, we we hear all of the all of the reviews, good, bad, ugly. But unfortunately, with controversial company Super Eagle, it, it just sounds more bad than good. But you said hey you know let, let me go ahead and give it a shot and yeah. you did not stay Terrible. <laughs> you you did not stay so what um what was the process what what lured you to super eagle and what happened uh during the course of the orientation so um i was fresh out of school I had just got my CDLs. I went straight into my mom. She actually does a, a trucking. She dispatches for a trucking company. So I I went straight to them and did hot shot for six months. Um, so I did that over the road a little bit for six months or whatever. And I decided, you know, I want to get in the big truck. So my friend that I went to school with, she was she was with Super Ego. And she was telling me, like, yeah, it's cool, it's cool. But she wasn't there that long, maybe a couple months. So I contacted them and they told me like I had to pay for my own flight out there. And once I get there at the airport, let them know and they have an Uber to pick me up, bring me to orientation. Worst mistake ever. <laughs> so I should have known because I'm like, uh, I gotta pay for my own flight. Okay, cool, no problem. I did it. But I, I didn't I didn't look into the company to realize that it was like owner operator lease to purchase. I thought I was going, you know, with orientation. I told them I only had the six month cop shot experience. I never drove driving, you know, besides in school or whatever. So I I get there, I contact them, the Uber picked me up, take me to a building. I get in the building, the receptionist, she doesn't say anything to me. I just walked straight in. She's on the phone. And when I walked in, it looked like a homeless shelter in there. Like, it's so many people just sitting around with all they, all they luggage. Mind you, everybody's coming straight there with all of their luggage. So I'm just sitting there wondering, like, okay, who do I go talk to? And I have to ask other drivers. Like, I see other drivers talking to each other to figure out what's going on. Where, where do we begin? So. I get in there, I put myself down, I ask somebody where am I supposed to go, who I need to talk to. So I finally found the recruiter who had called me. And uh, he just asked for my CDL license. And I showed it to him within five minutes of me being there. He, um, he showed me a room that was like old drivers maybe that abandoned the trucks or they came and got the trucks. It was like a bunch of stuff in there like refrigerators and microwaves and stuff that you know they done took out the truck and just threw in that room and it's just a big office like look like a call center everybody's rushing so you can't really understand them and when you ask questions they don't really they say oh you need to talk to this person or you need to talk to that person and then when you go to that person they say you need to talk to that person so five minutes from me being there he looked at my cdls he said go outside and pick a truck I'm like, okay, but you know, I'm new to this, so I'm really not understanding. So I go out there. He showed me, he showed me like two or three trucks, and I picked the third truck. He like, all right. So I go back in. He he told me to just sit down and wait. Finally, after an hour, I asked somebody, hey, you know, they told me to go pick out a truck. What am I supposed to do next? So his driver told me like, oh, you supposed to go talk to that person. So I went and sat down. He was just going over stuff that. I didn't even understand. By the time I noticed, 
I'm she handed me some paperwork that now I was supposed to be on this truck. Like, so I'm sitting there. Finally, they come back. We just sitting around. Everybody's just sitting around. There's no directions. There's no. There's no system. It's not organized. It's nothing. So the next day, we all leave. They take us to a hotel, and I actually recorded the hotel. I got there. We like it was like four of us in the van. So I'm like, man, this is a. Can we stop and get something to eat first of all? That was the first thing. Because by the time we left the building, it was like eight o'clock. So, oh, yeah, because between then, we, we went and took a drug test, and they brought us back. Um, so, yeah, by the time we get there, it's like 8 o'clock. So we asked me and one of the other girls, we asked, can we stop and get something to eat? He was like, no, we can only take it to the hotel. Boom, we get to the hotel. It's like some back alley. Like, I ain't even trying to be funny. It was like some old block stuff. I'm like, nah. So it was two guys with us, too. It was two girls and two guys in my group. And they were trying to get, my room was on the front. So they were trying to get me to be on the back side with them so that we could all kind of be together because it was a little sketchy. So I got my room, um, pulled back the cover because I was already like, ah, I really don't want to sleep on the bed. It was it was just nasty. Smashing, Basil. Cool. This coffee smells like shit. So I pulled back the cover, just like stains all on the seat. I went to the front. I told them about it. And I noticed that it was a super ego sign in there. So I'm like, putting two and two together in my head. Oh, they, they, you know, they probably working with them. No wonder it's like this. So she comes, she look at the seat. She bring me, <laughs> she bring me just a regular fitted seat. Tell me like, oh, it's probably just in front of washing machine and then lay the seat down and leave. So I put the seat on the bed myself. So I'm like, okay. So I started looking over the paperwork and everything they were saying in orientation. And I'm like, they handed us a book. They handed us the uh, ELD. Um, they had like this little safety group thing. And the what made me kind of like, review it is because they had two pages of front and back of gas stations that you could not stop it that they that you know i've done stop that in when i was doing the hot shot and they are all over the united states so i'm like i questioned them i said why we can't stop at these places they're like oh because it's been scanned before or something like that so i'm like that's weird so okay during orientation, a dude had pulled out his phone. And I know I'm kind of jumping around, but the dude had pulled out his phone and was doing something on his phone. And the lady, she looked over once she noticed his phone was out. And she's like, oh, no, you can't have your phone out. And he's like, what you talking about? I'm a grown man. And she was like, um, you can't be recording in here. He's like, I'm not recording. And so when we was like, why y'all be, why y'all acting so weird? You know, people start questioning during orientation. So like, why are you acting so weird? And she's like, no, no, it's for our safety. I'm like, uh, okay. So, you know, we was all talking about it. But before we left to even go to the hotel, a white lady came in there, like flying, flying through the parking lot, came in there, cussing, said that her truck being messed up. They haven't paid her. Before we took our drug, when we got in the car to go to, uh, to take the drug test, uh two dudes came out and they they were saying that they returned their truck because they was going out for over three weeks and only made two hundred dollars so we hearing all of this I'm like man i don't know i don't know about this and so we get to the room whatever wake up the next morning i had already been on youtube google <laughs> like just all bad stuff so in my head, I had already made it up in my mind, like, no, nah, this ain't going to work for me. Because on the second day, they was calling. That morning woke up. The Uber came and got us, took us back to the building. So I'm talking to the people in my group, and I'm telling them, like, hey, they under a lawsuit, saying that they double brokering. Like, have y'all seen the videos, like, on YouTube? A lot of people saying they scamming. And 
Oh, it is. So I thought once we got there, I talked to the recruiter that had called me originally. And I thought not, he was like, the first thing he asked me when I got there, you ready to pick out your trailer? And I was like, listen, this is the thing. Y- are y'all going to train me? Because I told y'all I don't have no experience with this. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to train you once you once you go get the trailer. We, we'll we show you. So I'm asking the other drivers. They're like, no, this is a owner operator. You know, you, you ain't getting no training. So, that, so I told him, like, look, I don't feel comfortable. I don't think I'm going to do this. Can y'all just get me an Uber back to the airport? And he like, oh, you don't want to do it? And he literally laughed and was like, you don't work for us? We ain't paying for you to get back. I said, okay, cool. So I left. I, I booked my flight that day, got an Uber, left, went to the airport. By the time I even reached the airport, they, they called me like three times. Are you coming in? Are you coming in? I said, I already been there and I talked to y'all. And I told y'all, I didn't have the experience. I wasn't going to be responsible for that truck and trailer once I pulled out because y'all going to dispatch a load as soon as I pick the trailer. So I'm not doing it. And he's like, no, no, we are teach you. Just come back. Just come back. I was like, no, I'm okay. I'm not doing it. I'm going home. <laughs> I'm already at the airport. So he, he was like, okay, if you change your mind, come back. What? <laughs> so now they've been, they been sending text messages every since. Like, come back, come back, come back. It's just, it's just weird. Man. Hell of a story, man. Hell of a story. So I, let's, I, let's, I, let's unpack it, this. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot. It, it, was, it was terrible. It was terrible. Wow. Let's, let's unpack this. So the whole thing was, was unorganized from the jump. It's like you walking into a, like, like uh, a homeless oh, shelter for for uh truck drivers that got the gleam in their eyes thinking that they're going to try and make a lot of money with super eagle right yeah like people laying on the floor on the walls and they got a fancy old ps5 in there you can play but they have you i mean nobody was playing it because by then everybody's tired like they land on their luggages they they bag, they sit up on the floors, you know, trying to get snacks out the vending machine because it was no restaurants nearby. It was unorganized. Wow. So straight, not not even to a hotel, just just straight to the office from uh from the straight. airport straight to the office. Yeah. Wow. And that was and that was the first day. That was the first day. All of this happened on the first day. The second day, I was gone. <laughs> it, it looked like a refugee camp in there. I can't make this up. I've never seen nothing like that in my life. Mom, I don't think I don't think this is right. Something's going on here, and I'm telling her everything is going on. She's like, "Nah, I've come back home." So that's what I did. I mean, you know, kudos to you for you know, for seeing it for what it was, but for all the other drivers that's that's coming in the, through the door and seeing all of the chaos and other drivers that's coming in saying, yo, I'm done with this, uh, you know, I'm about to go back home, yada, yada, yada. I mean, the drivers that are there waiting, are, are they taking, like, taking in the notes, like, getting the cues, like, Maybe this is a, a a bad idea for me. No, nobody there, having have having came, you know, having came and slide up to you and, you know, poach your ear and be like, Psst. run. I mean, the crazy part about it is the group. We we were all we were all suspicious of it. We all we all was questioning things during the first day of orientation, and everybody was saying the same thing, like. Nah, I'm not. I'm not feeling this. And we was asking about like the fuel. Like we gotta pay for the fuel, but y'all are getting a discount. Why is that? And stuff like that. So I thought everybody was on the same page. But I'm not one of those people that's gonna just follow behind you. I did the homework on it when we got to the hotel. I read the reviews. I let them know once we woke up that morning and was waiting on the Uber. I let them know about everything. They still wanting to go with it. 
And it was return driver shit. Once I got back that morning, the second day, once the Uber came and picked us up from the hotel, I got back. It was a rush. It was a Russian dude there, but he didn't work for the company. He was there to drive the truck, so he was doing the same thing I was doing. He that was his second time coming back, and he was like, "Oh no, you're never gonna own the truck. Like they'll they'll you you'll see like they'll run you for a good couple months, but then they'll let you go or." You just can't, you just can't make it. So I'm like, why you come back? <laughs> and he was like, cause I, I got it figured out this time. I know how to work it. But in the meantime, while I'm talking to him and saying, well, you know, they under a lawsuit. They, you know, it's, it's kind of sketchy. One of the guys that worked there for Super Ego, he came over there and he like, oh yeah, two weeks ago, a man came in with a machete. Machete don't text. And I had to tackle him this and that and i'm like well what's going on with y'all like y'all seem a little weird and he like no nah, no nah, i make a lot of money i said yeah you make more than the drivers do don't you because at that time i was kind of pissed off like y'all wasted my time and my money and now i gotta pay for my own way back so he like yeah i make a lot of money so i'm like you make more than the drivers do don't you being sarcastic and he like yeah he was asking about he like yeah i do and he like americans lazy this and this and that and talking like i i came over here with two hundred dollars now i got a condo i drive this and they all drive nice cars but i'm like putting two and two together like if you're talking about americans like that you don't give a damn about the drivers like it was just weird it was just weird. You sitting here admitting that you know, that you know it's some scamming going on here, pretty much. You you that's what you're telling me. Mm. Man, you, you you're a new driver, like brand new, fresh out of the box driver, and learning your bells is is going off better than than veteran drivers that's that's coming up in there that's trying to that's trying to make a way through uh, super ego. Let's talk about the paperwork. So. You finally found your recruiter who you was talking to over the phone. And the only thing they asked you was, you know, just to give this, to give them your CDL. And then after they ran the CDL, you know, to get the okay to make sure that you can drive or whatever, they give you the paperwork. Did they inspect you to, did they inspect you to uh, fill out the paperwork? sign on right then and there without even reading it what what kind of paperwork was it yeah, yeah um I, I honestly i didn't even i didn't even have time to read it and when i was trying to read it they give you like a binder and it's like a hundred pages in that binder so they just say oh well flip to this page this is what you sign me electronically and I'm asking the lady questions, but again, they bar you can barely understand what they are saying. And she's like, she don't understand what I'm saying. So <laughs> it was just a bunch of confusion. And yeah, me being, you know, kind of clueless about it, I, I signed, you know. And then by the time they hand me the, my, the, the binder and they got my truck number, the leasing, and all of that information, insurance information. And I'm just like, start adding the numbers up. I'm like, man, they're going to be taking out a lot of my, my check. <laughs> like, I don't know about this. It, it, it was just, it was just fast. It wasn't explained when you ask questions, they don't have an answer for it. Or they say, you have to talk to this other person and they're not here right now. So you get back to the room. Of course, they, they get you to a hotel, a sketchy backdoor hotel that looks like the Bates Motel. <laughs> Uh, you check everything yeah. out. Everything wasn't cool, so you got to change. But at the hotel, uh, I mean, what? I mean, was there any like any interactions with anybody else in the hotel that was, you know, that was trying to get in with Super Ego, other than the group that you was with? I believe so because. When the Uber came, I was the first one out of the four people that I rode in the van with to the hotel. I was the first one out there. 
and at the lobby standing outside in the rain. So when I was out there, it was other, it was like three other people with their suitcases. And I'm like, y'all stand here for a uh, super ego. It's like, yeah. So I let them go with the first, with the first person. And it's not an Uber, it's a uh, super ego. They have these cars that come and pick you up. So I was like, y'all can go ahead. I'm going to wait on my group. So they, yeah, it was other people that were staying there that I didn't know even, and I didn't even know they was there. Your time in the in in the hotel was kind of sketchy. Like you, you do what I do. Like when I get into a hotel, I always pull the covers off and you know just check. Sometimes I go in with a motherfucking CSI blue light on the motherfuckers. Like I, I literally slept in my clothes. I slept in my clothes. When I took a shower, I put a towel down on the bottom of the floor because I wasn't expecting none of that. So I didn't bring, no, you know, no shower shoes or nothing. And I, I put the towel down on the floor to take a shower. Like, I didn't want nothing touching me. I woke up taking my stuff. Like, make sure ain't no bed bugs on me. Like, yeah, it was terrible. Like, I looked out the the the, the uh, window in the room, and all it was was an alley behind the, the hotel. I'm like, oh, nah. I'm not going outside, no. Nope. So let's talk about when you got back and, and you had the interactions with the guy that was uh with his phone out. So you saying the 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 representatives of Super Ego uh had did they had like a policy that was up there that says no recording or anything like that, or this was like verbalized amongst uh, the people mm -hmm. that was in the that was in the uh building. Nah, it was just verbally said. It wasn't nothing to say you can't record inside. And actually, when she said, I'm just an outspoken person. And sometimes I, you know, be in the wrong, and you know, I shouldn't probably say half the things I say, but that's just me. So when when she said that to the dude about recording, I asked her, I said, well, y'all got all these cameras in here recording us, so what's the difference? And she was like, that's for our safety. And I said, why y'all need safety? And she's like, because the drivers get the drivers get crazy sometimes. And she walked off. She never came back to explain the e that's that's the lady who was supposed to explain the EODs to us, how to how to work those. She never came back to explain nothing after that. We were done for the day. She said that drivers get crazy. That should have been a red flag right there. Big exactly. old big old red flag right there. <laughs> But you also said during the time that some drivers was returning their trucks because of uh, reasons. Like, what, what, I mean, did they did they come in like all huffy and puffy about it, or they just you know nonchalantly just come in and say, "Hey, I'm I'm done with you guys. Y'all not paying me, or whatever the case." Could you figure out any of the any any of the reasons why they was returning their trucks, which is another red flag? Well, the first the first lady, um, she came. I was outside smoking, um, you know, smoking a cigarette or whatever, and uh, she came flying through the parking lot. So a couple people that was there, we was outside. We like, man, what's going on with her? Like, and she got out the car, like she slammed on brakes, parked the car, got out the car, and was cussing. Like she was just saying, she was just cussing, like pissed off. And we, some I didn't say that, but somebody asked like, "What's going on?" And she was like, "They full of shit. They been ripping me off. Oh, damn, I got a state. Had to get somebody to come pick me up. They full of shit. They took my money." And then she was walking in the building. Like I don't know what she what she was there and said. I just stayed outside. Um, and then before we was about to leave to go to the hotel, two black guys had came. They was walking out of the building, and, and um, they was like, I'm going to just let y'all know, don't waste your time. They wasn't really pissed off, but you could tell they was fed up. Like, um, he said that he was on the road for three weeks, and he only made $200. He's like, you're not going to make it with this company, and you're never going to own the truck. So everybody was hearing me. People still got it. And the return I noticed that the return drivers who had already worked for them, um, they they thought that they had it figured out by saying like, oh, well, this is what you need to do to make it. Use your own use your own credit card for the fuel. Don't use their card. That's that's how you would make it. 
I'm like, no, I'm not doing that either. <laughs> I'm not doing that. So the last bit for you, go back in there. You 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 talk to the recruiter. You you let them know again that you you know you're a brand new driver and you're gonna need uh you're gonna need some type of uh some type of training before you can get good. And your recruiter, well, that particular recruiter just felt like, no, nah, we just gonna go ahead and throw you to the wolves. Like you're you know, you they I'm I'm listening and I'm assuming that he figuring that you should already know what it is. You know, it's like you you should already know what time it is. So why are you asking me uh about training, knowing that this, you know, what what we is about? I'm 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 getting that kind of insinuation from him talking to you. When you get that and you it tell was- and you tell him about it, you 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 tell him about what you need going forward and he you know completely just blew you off so when you tell him that yo i'm out of here you know can you give me a you know can you give me an uber back to the to the airport and he was just like nah you 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 on your own that's that's i mean how did that make you feel Oh my God, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. <laughs> oh, I was pissed off because going back to what she said, like maybe he was like kind of like arrogant about me saying I need to train and stuff. He actually wasn't. He was persistent that, you know, no, you got it. Go, go get your trailer. Go get your trailer. And then we'll, fi- then we'll figure it out. But talking to the other drivers, I knew once I left with the truck to go get the trailer that I would be dispatched out with the load. It wasn't nobody there to, to help or to, you know, to make sure that you got it. So I knew he was lying about that, but he was acting so nonchalant to, you know, somebody probably really believed it, but I just knew like, no, nah, that's not, that's not the case. I know that's not the case. So yeah, when I asked him about, you know, paying for me an Uber to get back home, you know, to the airport, he was just like, oh, you you not working for us? I said, no. He said, okay, then, <laughs> and circled, like, literally laughed. Like, okay, then, you don't work for us? We're not paying for you to go nowhere. I said, okay, cool, cool. And, I mean, I was pissed off because it ended up costing me, like, $700 all together in two days for nothing that I really didn't last. See drivers, this is what I'm this is what I be telling you about when you guys be uh such in a hurry to go to these companies, not just the black ops companies, not just controversial company Super Eagle, but with any company, you should always come prepared for any situation. And that, and and again, that's why I say you never bring the kitchen sink with you. You just bring your essentials, your gold bag, book bag, and a hygiene bag. A credit card, you can always get a credit card and and a couple of hundred dollars so that when you get in a situation like Holly, when you figure out that this is the wrong company to be with, when you know that this ain't the company for you and you decide to leave and the company just, just say, okay, find your own way home, you will have no problems getting back home you can like literally look at the recruiter or whoever you working with and be like deuces you know but for holly right here being the new driver you know fresh out of school i commend you for everything that that you did to figure out that this company really wasn't uh wasn't a good fit for you and you you, (laughs) before you even got out you you decided to yeah, let, let me go ahead and just uh, turn around and 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 lead this company along. Uh, for new drivers, being that you're a new driver, because you can only talk about your experience. For new drivers, in your opinion, do you think that this comp should they give this company a try 
as 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 like you did coming out of school, getting your CDL, and going straight over to uh, Super Eagle. You you think that's a good thing to do, or should they, or should they try, or should they try going to a starter company? I'm gonna say hell no. Don't don't do Super Eagle. Do your research first. And you only gonna see maybe one guy talking good about it. And he's he's actually the security guard <laughs> that works inside Super Ego. It's a black guy that you'll see a bunch of videos saying, Yeah, I make good money with Super Ego on YouTube. That's the security guard. I'm gonna let you know that right now. That's the security guard. He's not a truck driver. You know, I heard that. And I, I, I seen that somewhere. Somebody else uh Somebody else did a video. Uh, he was talking to uh, a guy that was pretending to be a driver, but ended up being a a a security guard, and he was called out for it. So that's the same yeah, guy. And, and he, yeah, the crazy thing about it that's the only that's the only black guy in there. That's the only American person in there is him. That's it. It's no nobody else. It's all Russian. He's the only one. And I guess they, they pay him good enough to go out there and make them sit in the truck and make those videos with a headset on. But no, that's the security guy. Um so where where do you go from here? I mean where 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 are you now? Are you uh trying out for other companies? Where where are you now? Where where's your mindset on the whole uh lease trying to lease deal now since you since you had a bad taste in your mouth with Super Eagle? Um I mean I, I think the lease the purchase if if you do your research and and it's fair. I think it'd be a good idea because you know you're able to run how you want to run. After uh, Super Ego, though, I did go to another company in in North Carolina where I live, and uh, it, it it was it was just te- it was terrible. So now I'm just like I don't know about trucking anymore. And now I've had my CEOs for a year, and I'm just like I don't know about trucking anymore. It's a lot of it's a lot of behind the scenes things that you know. A lot of people don't know, like just running past your job time that, you know, and they reset the clocks and editing your logs and not getting paid for, you know, detention or just a lot of stuff. All right. All right. So you still got your CDL though, right? Yes, sir. All right. So uh, you, you figure out any, well, you know, there's other, you know, there's other uh fields out there that utilize cdls not just trucking you you know that right yeah 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 all right the the thing the thing with ego is um you know uh i my background is not clean so they willing to take anybody you know so that was a that seemed like a one up for me but i seen all the you know everything else that went along with it so I just like, no, nah, it's not worth it. So yeah, that, that's kind of the issue with a lot of companies. They want your record to be this old, or they want you to have so much. They want you to have six months experience, and that was my reason for going to Super Ego to get the track the trailer experience. But you can't you can't go apply for somewhere that needs experience if you can't get the experience. Wow. <laughs> oh man. Well, Holly. Thank you very much for stepping up in the building. I really do appreciate it. Big G's got it locked. Boy. Won't you let me out?